copy of God's Word and turn with me to uh, Luke chapter number 24. Uh, that's where we'll be today. Uh, we will turn uh, to uh, one other place uh, today, but uh, mainly we'll be uh, in Luke's account and we'll finish uh, taking a look at uh, John's account and what we'll be looking at is the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and when thinking about uh, the resurrection uh, many things uh, may come to mind uh, we may think about different traditions. I know uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me um, is the tradition that we had uh, growing up where uh, every year I got an Easter suit. If I didn't get new shoes for school, I got an Easter suit and I got some church shoes to go along with that Easter suit. Um, and that was a tradition that we had in our family because you're going to dress well on Easter Sunday. Um, you're going to look very nice on Easter Sunday. Um, and that's a tradition that we have. And um, the thing about it is that Traditions aren't always bad, but they can easily become bad if we start putting the tradition in place, but we don't know uh, the heart behind uh, the tradition. So the heart behind, my, my, mom, my mother's heart behind that was the Lord was raised on this day that we're celebrating. So you're going to look very nice on this day that we're celebrating that the Lord, he was raised. And so um, that's a tradition that sometimes could just be passed along, which is the same thing with like Resurrection Sunday. It could just be a tradition that's passed along, passed along. We do this, we do this, we do this. But there's not a, a focal uh, intent of our hearts to say, you know, let me truly focus in on what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Because Christianity hinges upon the resurrection of Christ. If a body is found, if bones are found, we might as well just disregard God's word. We might as well just cease to exist as believers because our faith hinges upon the resurrection of Christ. Why? Because that's our very hope. So as we look at this passage, that, that will be our focal point because I'm going to be pointing out as we go through the passage, many other different things that a lot of times we'll hear people focus in on, which isn't the actual point of the passage. The point of the passage is that Christ has been raised. Um, so if you guys will look at me, I'll read it for us real quick before we pray. And it reads as following, reading from verse 1 to verse 12. It says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, Behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing, and as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James. Also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense and they would not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home, marveling at what had happened. Father, we just pray uh, that you are in a great way uh, glorified uh, on this morning. Uh, we've gathered to, to glorify uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you gave uh, to us. And so, Father, we gather uh, even this morning to say thank you uh, for giving the Lord Jesus Christ to us um, and on our account and on our behalf uh, so that we may know uh, the eternal life uh, that you have uh, for us. Father, we pray uh, that you would even help us uh, this morning in order as, as we navigate uh, through your text, uh, that you uh, would have the points that are the focal points of the text to be preached um, and not other points. Father, I also pray that you would allow for your servant to decrease uh, as your word goes forth. Uh, I pray that I would not be a distraction. I pray that I would not get in the way of your word, but that your word would go forth clearly um, so that uh, the hearer may uh, hear and do uh, according to, to what your word uh, has commanded for uh, believers to do uh, by way of application of this text. 
So, Father, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for this opportunity, and we just pray that you are glorified in a great way on this early morning on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Um, verse number one, it begins, and it says this. It says, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. So now, what you end up having is you have this passage start off with a they. And the first thing that you probably would ask is, the who is the they? Because the day is not specified. And so the day is not specified, but the day will be specified later on as we go through this passage. But remember, the they is not the focal point of this passage. The focal point of this passage is going to be Christ has been raised. That's the focal point of the passage. Because a lot of times the passage is preached because, of course, we know who the people are that went to go see them. It's the women who were there to go and see Christ, to go anoint the body. And the focal point becomes, hey, like, let's make this passage all about the women being the first people to be there, which that's an excellent point to make, but that's not the point of the passage. The point of the passage is Christ has been raised. And we're going to see that specifically from the text later uh, as we continue to just navigate through the text. But I just want us to make sure that we seal our eyes and our minds solely upon Christ has been raised as we read each and every one of these verses. So it begins, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb. The first day of the week is very important to note and to understand. Because a lot of times our faith is being challenged. Uh, people are asking us, oh, well, if the Sabbath is on Saturday, then why do you Christians get together on Sunday? What is it about this Sunday? You guys are defaming and blaspheming the Sabbath by not gathering on the Sabbath and gathering on Sunday instead. Uh, but as early church tradition holds it, and as um, even the, early, the, the first church and the early church are all together, they would gather on, Saturday, uh, on Sunday for the specific purpose because Jesus Christ was raised on Sunday. Jesus Christ being raised was so significant to them that they said, let's gather together. Let's ourselves get together on what we call the Lord's Day because it was on this day that Christ was raised. So now the church gathers, gets together on Sunday. Why do I make this point? Because if you walk on King, if you go to the little mall over there, if you go in, in, in any of that, that neighborhood at all, even if you come even further down La Brea on Rodeo, you're going to run into some people who are called Hebrew Israelites. And if you don't know what it is that you believe and why you believe it, they may deter you. They may spook you and scare you like, oh, wow, I may not be doing this the right way. They say that we're supposed to be gathering together on the Sabbath, but, but the church that I go to gathers on Sunday. Are we doing it wrong? Is God truly being defamed by us gathering together on Sunday and not on Saturday? No. No, not at all. Let's look. Look with me, uh, if, you, if you will. If you would like to turn there, you don't have to, but if you would like to turn there, we'll turn to Acts uh, chapter number 20, verse 7, real quick. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. And we'll see a few examples of this so that you guys can kind of go back and do your own study so that you aren't taking my word for it, because uh, my word means nothing. It's all about God's word. Uh, Acts chapter number 20, verse number 7, it says, On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together, for what purpose? To break bread, Paul began doing what? Talking to them, intending to leave the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. This is a sermon. We also see in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16, if you turn there with me real quick, we'll see the same point being made. 1 Corinthians 16, and once you turn there, we'll be reading verse number 2. And it reads as follows. It says, On the first day of the week, each one of you is to put aside and say, as he may prosper, so that no collections be made when I come. What is Paul talking about here? He's talking about actually taking up offerings so that there is no need or no desire to try and scramble for things at the last minute in order for ministry to continue to go forth. We see these examples, and there are plenty more that we can go to that say the same exact thing. But the point that I want you all to see is that gathering on the first day of the week has been and continues to be 
This isn't something that we made up. This isn't something that somebody, uh, the, the, the Europeans made up and then kind of passed on to us like, our religion is false, our religion isn't true. This is something that we can look to the, spe specifically at the scriptures and see right from out of the text. You don't have to be of dismay uh, about what the word of God says. On the first day of the week, the Lord Jesus Christ was raised. That's why the church began worshiping together on the first day of the week. The text says, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. They brought these spices because, as we're going to see, they're expecting uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to be here in this tomb. For what purpose? So they can anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number two, it reads, And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And this kind of leaves our mind puzzling. It left my mind puzzling before I continue uh, in my study. And the question that I had was, um, if the stone hadn't been rolled away, how would they have anointed the body? Because but this is a fairly large gathering of women who are going to anoint the body, but they still wouldn't have been able to move the stone because I don't know if you guys are familiar with it at all, but uh, there was a, a, a rock formation that was, would be cut out right before the tomb where the ro stone would be rolled into that rock formation. So now it's going to take somebody who's either incredibly strong or able to actually push this rock to move this rock from out of that place. And they would not have been able to do that. And we even saw in our response of reading this morning from Mark uh, that that's what they were talking about continually amongst themselves. When we get, like, how are we going to move this stone? Like, like what will we do? How will we move the stone so that we can anoint this body? Because if we can't move the stone, we can't anoint the body. What will we do when we get there? That was a question that they were asking as they were going. I found the stone rolled away from the tomb. So now there's this.